Hey everyone! Welcome to Empty Pad Dev, a channel about the art of making video games. This is the first episode in a series called How to Make Banana Prints, which is gonna be our first series in the How to Make segment. In the How to Make videos, we will choose a game from our childhood and try to recreate it in Unity. And of course, we will be showing you the entire workflow through the entire project. We will try to cover every aspect of making the game including the audio, UI and all the other stuff. We are doing this kind of projects as a part of our learning process and we wanted to share it with you guys so we can all learn new things together and improve our skills as game developers so that we can get one step closer to creating our dream games. So that's what the how to make segment is all about, now let's talk about the game we chose for our first project. For our first series we chose a game called Banana Prince, which is a 2D platformer on the NES and it was released in Japan in 1991 and a German version was released in the following year featuring slightly different graphics. We chose this game because it had a lot of cool mechanics for its time, which we thought would be very fun to remake. And now without any further ado, let's get into the video. In this episode, we will be setting up our project, and here is what we will have made by the end of this episode. But before we start, we want to make it clear that we won't be building the whole game, we will be only building the core mechanics and systems of the game, and then if anyone is interested, they can expand on it. We tried to remake all the assets we will be using in this project and there will be always links to them in the description section below so feel free to download them and follow along with us. In case you don't have Unity installed, I will leave a link in the description to an official Unity tutorial where they explain step by step how to download and install Unity. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Alright, so as you can see, I have Unity Hub open here and the first thing we need to do is create a new project. We can do that by hitting the new button or from the drop down menu we can select a version. For this project, I will be using the 2020 LTS version, so I'll go ahead and select the first one. Now we can give our project a name. And let's make sure we've got 2D selected for the template. And here you can change the location of your project if you want. So let's go ahead and hit create. Alright. So now the first thing we need to do is create the ground tile map. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we have all the packages we need. So we can do that by going to window up here, package manager, and let's select Unity Registry. And here we can start looking for the packages we need. So the first package we need is the 2D sprite package, which is a sprite editor for 2D assets. And the second one is the 2D tile map editor, which we will be using to create our levels. So make sure they're both installed. So now we can go ahead and right click in the hierarchy, select 2D object, tile map, and then rectangular. And as you can see it created a grid game object for us automatically and inside this game object our tile maps will be rendered. We can think of tile maps in Unity as layers where multiple tiles can be rendered on each other. So let's go ahead and rename this tile map to something like ground collider. Now we need to add a collider component to this tile map. So let's go to add component here and select tile map collider 2D. Great. So now to control the collisions, we need to create a new layer and we use layers in Unity to decide which game objects can interact with other game objects. And in this case, we want the player to interact with the ground. So let's go to layer up here and select add layer. And here we can add new layers. So I'll go ahead and add a new layer, and I'll call it ground. Now we can go back to our ground collider tile map and change the layer to ground. Cool. So now to start painting onto this tile map, we need to bring out the tile palette. So we can go to window up here, 2D, and select tile palette. And as you can see, in this window we have all the tools we will need to paint tiles. So I'll go ahead and drag it to the right of our scene view. So now we can start creating our ground tiles. You will find the link in the description below where you can download all the sprites I will be using in this video. So once we have the ground sprites, we can go ahead and create a new folder inside the assets folder by right clicking, create folder. And let's name this one sprites. Let's open it up. And let's go ahead and create another folder. Let's call this one environment. And to keep things more organized, I can go ahead and create yet another folder. And I'll call this one ground. So now I can drag my ground sprite into this folder. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's click on it. And here we have the import settings. So let's go ahead and change some of them. 
So first let's make sure that the texture type is set to sprite and then change the sprite mode into multiple because we have multiple sprites here. And let's change the pixels per unit to 16 because this is the size of each tile in our tile map. Since we're working with pixel art, we need to make sure that the filter mode is set to point because otherwise our sprite will be blurred. And the last thing, let's make sure that the compression is set to none. So let's apply the settings and let's open the sprite editor. So now here we need to slice out each individual sprite. So let's go to the slice option up here. Let's change the type from automatic to grid by cell size. And we know that the size of each tile is 16 by 16 pixels. So let's go ahead and type it here. We don't have any offset or padding. So let's go ahead and hit slice. So everything seems fine here. So now we can go ahead and hit apply. And let's close the sprite editor. And now if we take a look at our object, we can see that each individual sprite is a separate asset. Awesome. So now we can start making our ground tiles. But in order to do that, we need to create a new palette. And a palette is basically a collection that contains all the tiles we'll be using. So let's click on create new palette. And let's name this one ground tiles. Hit create. Now we can go to our assets folder. Let's create a new folder. Let's call it palettes. And let's select it. And this will create a palette object inside our project. So now all we have to do is drag in our ground sprites into this palette. So let's go to our ground folder under the sprites, environment folders. And let's drag the ground tiles into this palette. This will generate a tile asset for each of our sprites. So to keep things organized, let's go ahead and create a new folder inside the assets folder. Let's name this one tiles. And let's create another folder inside this one. Let's call it ground. Now we can select it. And here you can see that we have all the tiles. Cool. So now we're ready to start painting our level. For now, I'll just paint a small part of it. For those tiles that the player will not be colliding with, we will make a new tile map and we will call it ground. So let's right click on our grid game object, 2D object, tile map, rectangular, as we did before. Let's rename this one to ground. And the only difference is that this tile map will not have any colliders. And we will leave the layer as default for now. So now let's go ahead and paint the ground using the ground collider tile map. So to do that, we select the brush tool and then select the tile we want to paint with and make sure that the active tile map is the ground collider tile map. Let's start placing them inside our grid. So I'll go ahead and paint the first row. Nice, and now for the row underneath, we will not need any colliders. So let's change the active tile map to ground. And let's select the tiles and paint. Great! So now we're done with our ground, but one problem we still have if we go to our game view, we can see these weird lines. And to remove them, we need to go to Edit, Project Settings, and then select Quality. And here we need to make sure that we disable anti aliasing. So now if we take a look, voila, they're gone. Now let's create our player. So we can start by importing the player sprites. So let's go back to our sprites folder, let's create a new folder. Let's call it player. Let's open it. So here I have an idle run sprite, which you can find in the links below. And as you may have noticed, it looks kind of weird. And the reason why we made it this way is that we can control the color of each part separately, which we'll be doing in later episodes. So now let's drop it in the player folder. So let's click on it and change the import settings. So texture type is sprite. Sprite mode is multiple. Pixel spin unit is 16. Filter mode is point, and finally the compression is none. Let's apply. Now let's open the sprite editor, choose the slice option, make sure that the type is grid by cell size, but this time the size is going to be 32 by 32. So let's go ahead and change it. And also let's change the pivot to bottom. And then hit slice. Great. So now I think we need to rename each sprite to make it easier when making the animations later. So we can do that by selecting each individual sprite, like this. And here in the bottom right corner, we can see the sprite settings. We can see the name property. 
So let's rename this one to idle underscore outline. Let's rename the next one to idle underscore skin. And the last one to idle underscore close. Now I'll go ahead and rename the other sprites. So this one is going to be run one outline. run one skin so i'll go ahead and speed up this part all right now we're done so let's hit apply and close the sprite editor now we can go ahead and create our player game object so in the hierarchy let's right click and select create empty let's call it player so it's a personal preference, but I always like to separate my logic from my graphics. That's why I'll go ahead and create another game object inside the player game object. And I'll name this one player renderer. So this way we can put all our code inside the player game object. And for rendering sprites, we will be using the player renderer. So now I'll go further and create two more game objects inside the player renderer. And I'll name the first one skin. And the second one, close. Now to display sprites inside game objects, we need a sprite renderer component. So click on the player renderer game object and let's add a new component and select the sprite renderer. Let's do the same thing with the skin and clothes game objects. Very nice. Now we can simply drag our sprites to the sprite property right here. So I'll go ahead and select the player renderer. And let's drag the idle outline into the sprite property. Select the skin and drag the skin sprite. And finally the clothes and drag the clothes sprite. Very nice. So now of course we don't want our player to stay white like this. So we can change the color from the color property here. So for the close, let's change the hex code here into FFA542 and let's go to the skin game object and change the color as well to FFE7AD. Awesome. So we don't want the player to stay floating in the air like this. So let's go to the scene view, select the player, make sure you select the move tool and let's move it a bit down. Yeah, it looks nice. So now the last thing we have to do is changing the background color. So we can do that by going to our main camera. So here we have the background property. Let's click on it, go to the hex code, and let's type 3CB CFC to get this nice light blue. All right, so that was pretty much it for this video, guys. In the next one, we will start implementing the player movement, so stay tuned. And if you enjoyed this one, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and push the notification icon to get notified when the next episode is out. Never forget to save your projects and I'll see you in the next one.